In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. Today is the first Sunday of the Holy Great Lent, and the Church arranged the period of the Holy Great Lent to have one theme, and the theme of the journey of the Great Lent is the journey to the bottom of the Father, our Heavenly Father. And uh, if we go through the weeks, today is the uh, preparation week, after the first week, the preparation week, and next week's temptation, the prodigal son, and the Samaritan woman. And up to this point, we are in the period of the strife. We are striving to, uh, you know, revive our heart, revive our relationship with God. And then come the second part of the Holy Land, which considered the part of bearing the fruits, the week of the paralytic, the born blind, and then lastly, the Holy Week at the end. So today, the church last week in the Holy Gospel, in the preparing us for the land, it uh, talked to us about the pillars of the worship, prayer, fasting, and almsgiving. And it come today and tell us, remember that if you sacrifice your time to pray to the Lord, if you you know, like you've sacrificed your food, what you like, to fast. And if you sacrificed the, your belongings to make a charity or a donation, you are not wasting anything. You are actually bearing or reserving for yourself a treasure in heaven. And this is how today's gospel starts, from the gospel according to St. Matthew for the, in the Sermon on the Mount. It said, do not lay up for yourself treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break and steal. And uh, we always look at wealth as a blessing from the Lord. God, when he bless a person, he bless him by all means, through his children, through his, you know, health, through his... Uh, family, you know, and through his belongings too. But Satan always turned this around and he make God's blessing into sometime obstacles. And instead of bringing us closer to the Lord, it make for self or it create for self an obstacle between us and God and take the heart of a person away from God. So the church today, as we start the first week of the land, it asks us, where is your treasure? And what do you depend on? Is your treasure on this earth, on all the materialistic stuff? Whom do you depend on? Do you depend on God or do you depend on yourself? And a reminder come, where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. So if your heart with the Lord, your treasure will be heavenly. If your heart is not with the Lord, your treasure will be materialistic and earthly. And when the person starts to rely a lot of time on his own power, on his own, you know, uh, possessions, God starts to diminish in his eye. He will feel that, why do I need God in my life? I need restrictions. I am free. I have everything that I have. And uh, he feels that we can provide our own needs. There is no need for any external you know, help from anybody. And this starts to create a barrier between us and God, like a fog. You know, when a day is you know, like uh, rainy and uh, it's uh, too dark, you, s you can't not see the sun. And the Lord is our son of righteousness. And a lot of time barriers like clouds come and, you know, make a barrier between us and God. And one of them is, of course, depending on ourselves, not depending 
on God. It break, it blocked the vision between us and God. Saint Paul in First Timothy he says, command those who are rich in this present age not to be haughty nor to trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God who gives us richly all things to enjoy. So look at this last part. So we trust in God, but he gave us richly all things to enjoy. And God loves to see us enjoying his creation and enjoying his blessing. Because Satan always put in our mind that, well, if you follow God, you cannot enjoy anything. You are deprived from all enjoyment. And this is wrong. God wants us to enjoy his creation, all his blessing that he is giving to us, but he wants us to enjoy it eh, through a certain way that glorify him and bring us close to him, not bring us away from him. Uh, Saint Augustine, one of the church fathers, he says in one of his quotes, if the heart is on the earth, like the heart is earthly, very materialistic, that is if the person in his behavior seeks an earthly benefit. You always seek whatever is materialistic, whatever is, you know, going away. Then how can he get purified? How he can be pure? As long as he lies down in his earthly dirt, as long as you are earthly, you will be like in the dirt. And the example from this picture, you see those gold coins, they are in the mud. They are gold and they are very shiny, but in the mud, their shine and their look is a fading away because of the mud they are in. This is what we are when we are earthly and we are always thinking an earthly and materialistic way. And then he continues, however, if the heart is in heaven, if you always think in a heavenly manner, it will be pure, because everything in heaven is pure. Look at it, that these golden coins are without this mud and dirt that they are in. They will be pure, they will be shiny. This is who you are when you are heavenly or think in a heavenly manner. Things are polluted when mixed with impurities, and our thoughts are polluted by desiring earthly matters. Do you want to pollute yourself? This is the dirt that you put yourself in and your thoughts and everything in when you always think earthly, not in a heavenly manner. Despite of the purity of the earth and the beauty of its arrangement in itself. And the problem is not in the earth, in God creation. No, God created everything good but we are the one, or through the evil way, we are the one who twist and use these things not in a godly or good way for us. This is the first part of today's gospel. The second part took about worrying. Which of you, by worrying, can add one cubit to his stature? Look at this uh, little girl. She is so short, she cannot reach the book. You know, can she, as she goes up, she is trying to reach higher and higher. And all the time we are doing the same. You are afraid, you are worried, you are, you know, shail al ham, you know. And a lot of time we hear news here or there, you know, about all kinds of things that make us worry about our jobs, about our health, about, you know, economy in the country. And do you think worrying will change anything? Will change the outcome that will happen to anything related to you? No. When you worry, you do not change anything. But on the other hand, you yourself, you are the one who will be troubled. But the outcome will not change. We are to look to God first and our needs will be supplied. A lot of time we don't have God in the picture. We look at everything and we do it in a matter of uh, alone, like a solo person. I'm by myself, what I'm gonna do, how I'm gonna fix this issue. And the reason we are always worried because we are not, we are seeking everything but God first. 
Where is God in your priorities? Do you have God always in everything that you do? Do you have God with you through everything that you go through every day? Or you remember God when it comes to, for example, Saturday or Sunday morning, and maybe I will remember to go to his house. No, the relationship with God is a daily, you know, companionship between us and God. And we are too concerned about what everything around us is, how much we have in the bank, what the doctor is telling us in our visit, what my boss is telling us about my job. And a lot of time we have concerns, 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 but we need to be concerned more about what God wants us to do, how he wants us to look at everything we go through, and then we can have the right perspective about everything. A lot of time the solution comes when you see God. When, for example, you are anxious about anything, as St. Paul said in Philippians, he said, be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be, may, be made known to God. When, for example, you are worried about anything, do you first go and pray? For example, you heard news about job that they are started downsizing the company and laying off people. Do you go and pray and say, God, me, myself and my family and everything in your hand, and I trust if you close a door, you will open another door? If you hear a news from your doctor that your blood test is not good or numbers are not doing well, do you go and pray and say, God, take care of myself or my health or my family health? Do you, for example, which I don't think we go through that here, but in many places around the world, if you don't have a meal offered on your table, do you go on your knee and ask that God will provide for myself and my family? We shouldn't worry about anything. Prayer is always uh, a support. Prayers always open the doors of heaven for us. If you worry, remember the examples that God gave to us and we heard about in today's gospel from what we see in our daily life. Look at the sparrows and pigeons. Are they among the creatures that do not store grain and our heavenly Father provide for them? You know those birds, you don't hear that they have kida storage rooms and they wait for famine and they prepare for famine and they store, no. Uh, and you think, is it reasonable for those birds have higher confidence in their creator more than us? We are whom we are, the crown of God's creation. We always worry, but look at his creation that always trust in him. And what else? It says today, consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. The lilies are beautiful flowers, and uh, they neither toil nor spin. And yet, God says, I say to you, even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Solomon was very wealthy at his time. He had the greatest wisdom, and he was also very wealthy. Look at him, and he says, you know, look at how he was wearing and what he was wearing. And look at this lily. This lily is even much better and nicer than what Solomon, the maybe one of the wealthiest uh, in the history, was uh, 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 clothing himself with. Look at the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is thrown into the oven. Today you see the grass and maybe a, one come a cloth, you know, like a, a day that a very high heat or, you know, like a, no rain is coming for a while, it start to die and it start to get very yellowish. But a, will he not, God, yani, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? If God take care of the lilies, if God take care of the pigeons, if God take care of the grass of the field, which are just a creation that he made. Willn't he take care of you, you who are the crown and the, the king and the queen of his creation? 
And this will always remind us not to worry and to trust in God who always take care of us. So at the beginning of the Lent, we should examine ourselves, whether we have an anxiety, whether we depend on earthly resources. And it's a reminder today as Psalm 37, it says, commit your way to the Lord, trust also in him, and he shall bring it to path. Commit your way. Now, sometimes worries comes and an anxiety comes because we are not committing our way to the Lord. We are uh, committing our way to, you know, evil and to this world and to the king or the master of this world, which is Satan. Commit your way to the Lord through this fast and see the outcome. You will reap peace of mind. Whenever the person submit himself, himself to God, uh, he will trust in him. He will recognize the power of prayer. As I said, prayer relief. Prayer, you know, open the doors of heaven. Prayer make us feel that we are not alone. We have support from the Lord. So today, as we start the, the first week of the Lent, it's a reminder. Reminder that where is your treasure? Reminder that always seek the Lord. Don't have worries. But eh, remember, through this period, it's a time for revival. It's a time to take us back to the bottom of the Father, where we find all the peace, all the love, and all the care. And glory be to God forever and ever. Amen.